So, I hear you need more performance in VR. Well, I'm here to give it to you. More specifically, I'm not really involved, but AMD, and sorry for the pronunciation, Holger Friedrich? Friedrich? Either way, they both came together to make OpenVR FSR, which is just an implementation of Fidelity FX Super Resolution in VR. But what does it actually do to give you more performance? Well, it renders the game at a less than native resolution, and then uses some fancy tricks to try and upscale it to native. And to get more performance out of that, you just need to run that trickery faster than you could natively render the image. But just doing that doesn't mean you have a winner. I could render a game at 720p and just add a reshade sharpening filter on top, and that would be way faster than rendering it at 4K it would just also look worse. So you need to find a magic balance between an algorithm that manages to make the game look just as good as native, and one that is really fast to run. And that's where Nvidia's beating AMD right now. To explain it to you like you're five, DLSS is like it runs inside the game. It has depth info and movement data so it can better predict how things should look. Whereas Fidelity FX Super Resolution is like it's running on top of the game, just being able to see the final image and trying to add effects to it to make it look native. So Fidelity FX already, just based on how it works, is at a disadvantage. But an advantage of that method means that it's much easier to add it to pretty much any game, and also it means it's much easier to mod it into games, like we're doing now. It also means that it's platform agnostic. In theory, you could run this on basically anything, and because of that, AMD officially supports it on not only their new GPUs, but also their older GPUs, and Nvidia's GPUs, new or old. By default, it renders at 75% resolution and upscales, but you can set that number to whatever you want. Which is all really cool if it works, but it sounds like it's too good to be true. So, let's try it out. Oh, this is hard with one hand. So, uh, Beat Saber is maybe a bit of a disappointment. I mean, yes, it does work, but also the text looks significantly worse than before, and there's about an extra millisecond and a bit added to the frame time, so we have lost performance. But how? Well that's because Beat Saber's already so easy to run. I can run it at 4K over 300 FPS. And so by, yes, we have gained performance by dropping the resolution, but then we still have to run Fidelity FX on top of that, and so my theory is that running Fidelity FX on a game that's already running so fast takes longer than just rendering the game. So even though you shouldn't use Fidelity FX Super Resolution with Beat Saber, unless you have a GPU that's right on the edge of being able to run it, so I don't know, a, a 960? This is a good look at how Fidelity FX looks, and like I said, text is far worse. It's perfectly readable, unless it's super small, but it, you can, like I just said, read it. But the environment looks way better than 75% res should look. I would know because for a bit I used it at 90% because of a weird thing with ALVR and their uh, weirdness with supporting 120Hz at full resolution for a little bit, and 90% looked much worse than this 75% looked. Then again, you shouldn't use this because you lose performance. One thing to keep in mind is that those image quality comparisons I show you in a second are real, obviously, but you probably won't be able to tell much of a difference. Because I didn't. <laughs> like, it is there, they are genuinely, one is FSR, one is native, but you're most likely on a 1080p monitor, so they're not pointless because you can see the frame rate in the bottom right, it's just that don't think you'll be able to see a huge difference, so eh, 
But no matter the display or device you're on, try setting this video to the highest resolution you can support, just because uh, it, it should at least help a bit during the image quality comparisons. And maybe while you're down there, subscribe if you like this and some of my other videos. So then, let's try another game, see if that works better. Onward is a good game that's quite graphically demanding, although I haven't played it in a while because of the extreme heat we've been having. VR is not great when it's like 25 degrees plus, and there's no air conditioning. But let's give Onward a try. Let's give Onward a try. There's nothing. So according to the OpenVR FSR GitHub page, some games just don't like you messing around like this, and Onward seems to be one of them. It does go to the first loading screen, and then stops you there before anything 3D is rendered. So maybe that's anti-cheat? I don't know. Either way, we can't use Onward. So let's try Blade and Sorcery. I don't play it much, at all, really, but it's also quite hard to run according to my friends, so let's give that a try. And hey, it works. But <laughs> we lost performance again. But there's also a valid reason for that, and there's a reason I picked Blade and Sorcery. See, my CPU is actually slightly thermal throttling. It, it can only reach about 4 GHz right now, because the thermal paste that came with it is just all dried up and gone, so as we speak, uh, thermal paste is being delivered, and so that's nice, but I don't have it, and it's quite a CPU intensive game, and so I wanted to give you an example of another situation where Fidelity FX Super Resolution won't help you. In this case, we aren't GPU bottlenecked. This is a CPU thing, and Fidelity FX only affects the GPU, and so the GPU is doing more work but not giving you more frames, and so we lose performance. Okay then, so mental checklist. We need a game that is very GPU heavy, is VR, and isn't CPU bottlenecked right now even though it normally wouldn't be like Blade and Sorcery is. That shouldn't be too hard, but it is because most VR games are super easy on the GPU or super super hard on it. One good compromise, though, is Minecraft, because you can adjust the resolution in-game, and it's pretty repeatable. And, yes! Look at these graphs. They're not really graphs, I tricked you, they're numbers. But, look at the numbers! It's actually a tangible, mo-ish benefit to using Fidelity FX F FSR. Uh, of course, to make this situation happen, I was running Minecraft at 500% resolution, and going down to 67% res, we only saved about a millisecond in frame time, but that's not an insignificant f FPS increase, and if Minecraft really is this hard for your GPU to render, you will actually be getting, uh, potentially, uh, not too great VR experience to an actually adequate one. This whole video though has been kind of disappointing. Like, <laughs> I was hoping for more. It's not uh, Friedrich's fault, but I don't, I don't know. I expected this to be bigger. I mean, look at these people on DCS World mentioning 20% increases. Oh, yeah a 10 FPS increase when you're already just running VR at 45 FPS is over 20%. So it seems like people are having a similar experience to me. Uh, in games that are GPU bottlenecked, they are getting frame rate increases, just not by much. And so there's my conclusion. If you were hoping to play Half-Life Alex, which is one of the games that doesn't work with this anyway, on a GTX 960 at Quest 2 resolution, you're going to be solely disappointed. But I don't think that's the point right now. This gives game developers and us a good insight into what FSR can make games look like. Performance optimization will come later when games support it natively, but what we can see right now is that 
compared to running at a sub-native resolution, you should basically always turn this on. Assuming you are just GPU bottlenecked and that's why you're running at sub-native. So, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this comes to VR games natively soon, because it's real promising. But, I kind of wish that I could have come to this conclusion sooner, because I, I frankly have more interesting videos to make. Either way, this video has happened, since you're seeing it. It is interesting, just maybe not as in-depth as I hoped it could be, but yeah, that's it.